ribeye. So you're, you're very familiar with ribeyes. And it does have a cap that's on the outside. This is the cap and it rolls around the whole outer surface of this ribeye. This ribeye also has what we call a lip, which is a fat lip or fat tail that's right here on this side. So to make um, these items that you see on the screen, I'm actually going to remove this lip. Now this muscle that I'm removing is called the spinalis muscle or spinalis dorsi. The muscle I'm leaving behind, the eye of the ribeye, is a longissimus or a longissimus dorsi. This spinalis muscle or this ribeye cap muscle is the third most tender muscle in the beef carcass. So if you think about a traditional ribeye steak, the one I had earlier, the last one you bought or the last one you ate, there's always an eye, a center portion right in the middle, and then there's usually a half moon muscle that lays right on the outside. And this cap that I'm removing would be that half moon muscle that's on the outside. And if you really are a ribeye connoisseur, you, you know that muscle and you probably really like that muscle. Um, maybe you save that part till the end because it is the third most tender muscle in the carcass and it's got a lot of marbling. It's got a ton of flavor. A lot of people, a lot of beef people, this is their favorite muscle, but it's hard to get it by itself. You usually get it as part of a ribeye steak. This whole sheet that I have here is a ribeye cap. It's a big flat piece of spinalis dorsi muscle, third most tender muscle. But same thing, to use it on its own, I need to, again, remove the fat and the connective tissue. And there is some connective tissue here on this interior surface that I need to remove. The, the idea of doing this is, is, number one, to create smaller portions from the eye of the ribeye, which I'll show you next. But it, it would also be really to create a unique eating experience, probably just on a restaurant menu. It'd be tough to do this in retail, have all this trim and be able to, to charge enough for this. Um, or maybe the pieces would be split and go to food service and retail. But this ribeye cap on its own is a pretty rich um, eating experience, a pretty high level gourmet eating experience. So this is a ribeye cap. I've cleaned it up so you can see what that looks like. Third most tender muscle all on its own now, not a part of the uh, regular ribeye steak. And we could leave this whole, cook it whole, slice it after cooking. Um, we could maybe stuff it and make it even more decadent, stuff it with maybe some spinach and some cheese or some vegetables, roll it up, cook it, and then slice kind of pinwheel steaks from that. Or we can just cut steaks or strips from this whole ribeye cap. And they're gonna look more like kind of like a flat iron because they're gonna be the square, thinner steaks. So that's the ribeye cap. Um, very high uh, quality eating experience from that. But removing that has now allowed me to get down to just this one piece of the ribeye roll, which is the eye of the ribeye, that longissimus muscle. Again, I'm gonna take off the fat and the connective tissue. And ultimately what I'm doing is get down a single clean muscle like you've seen throughout the afternoon. And I'm gonna cut ribeye fillets like I did with the top sirloin fillets. This method of cutting the ribeye, is gonna give us a smaller portion size. It's gonna allow us to cut steaks thicker, uh, but it's also gonna remove a lot of the fat of the ribeye. So for some people, they really hate watching me do this because I'm messing up <laughs> their favorite cut, right? But, yeah, you know, we, I know. But we, we also think about the people that, that don't currently eat a ribeye now, so they're missing out, right? Um, and maybe there's a way that we can help them enjoy a ribeye in a smaller, leaner portion. This is one way to do that. Okay, so now I have the ribeye center cleaned up. I removed the fat connective tissue. So this is a ribeye with the cap removed and all the fat within removed. Okay, and so what I'm gonna do is, is what you see on the screen is I'm gonna make ribeye fillets and pretty easy at this small side where it kind of tapers down. I'm gonna cut fillets at least one inch thick here. And it's very straightforward once you have trimmed off that fat and connective tissue. And you can, you can get an idea of what that looks like here. Um, same shape and size of a fillet, a tenderloin <coughs> fillet, but a lot more marbling than we would have in a tenderloin, a lot more fat, uh, more flavor. 
Um, and a different way to eat a ribeye, we can go thick on it. Uh, we don't have the cap, we don't have that kernel fat, it's a good portion size. All, all the same things I said about the sirloin for this ribeye filet and a creative way to eat the ribeye filet and you're going to get to uh, experience that a little bit later. So I can keep cutting those ribeye filets um, and then it starts getting a little <coughs> bit thicker at this end. So we will often split this in half lengthwise and then just like I did with the sirloin, I can either leave these whole uh, for a small petite uh, ribeye roast or I can keep cutting these into the fillets. So now it's a more manageable shape to cut, continue cutting those fillets and keep them about the same size. <coughs> but there's very, various options for the ribeye, whether I'm cutting fillets or these petite roasts, and then certainly with the cap and what I might do with the cap, leaving it whole, stuffing it, cutting it into steaks. Different presentation for the ribeye, potential solution for ribeyes getting larger over time, just like with the sirloin. Um, and, a, and a pretty cool way to eat a ribeye cap.